This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yo, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week, we're talking with Brewery Amagang. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. So joining us today, we have Phil Leinhardt, the brewmaster for All My Gang. We're going to talk about Belgian-inspired beers, farmhouse sales, some new IPAs, yeast, and probably get a little into the uh, the Game of Thrones beers. And maybe the show. Who knows? Phil, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Great to be with you guys. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. You were mentioning, Phil, you said you're actually getting a little, a little seasonally appropriate weather in New York now, correct? Yes. Finally. Good deal. Awesome. Yeah, we just, uh, we had a little hot snap here. We, we did. got up in the mid 80s. And then today, wow. I think we're back in the 60s here. So, yeah. I, you know what? That's, I would be okay with that, Brian. Let me get, yeah, it's comfortable. F- mid 50s in the morning, mid 60s to 70, mid 70s in the evening. And we can just recycle that all. And like 90 degrees at noon, just for like <laughs> just for 30 like minutes. 10 minutes yeah. there, right? Just you can have the 90 all, degrees. Want- we can keep it there. Right? The, yeah. All the all the weather from all the seasons in one day, just different parts of the day. See? Perfect. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. 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 You know, Brian, we actually got a little listener feedback this week. Oh, which yes, we did. I, I don't support because they were encouraging you, which I'm never, never a fan of. So for those that have been listening to the show, Brian suggested, you know, all these breweries are having to find interesting delivery methods for their beer. And Brian suggested trebuchet. I, a, I stand by that too <laughs> and uh, we want to thank brian who listens on wtki in huntsville alabama he said that's a great idea for gated communities brian he said it's a good way to deliver beer but he did say we may want to try using it only with cheap beer uh, because this customer is just going to get out to get bombed there so, do we have a rim shot sound <laughs> i can we can add it in but my my problem there is i don't like encouraging <laughs> your your craziness there but yeah brian thanks for listening thanks for the feedback we appreciate it so mr hewitt how was your week it was good it was good it was eventful boy where do you even start so instead of drinking going drink your cellar like i've done recently right. i had a day of drinking coffee beers okay. i was inspired by the the oma gang uh, blueberry coffee three philosophers and I happened to see while I was picking up some some beers of theirs, I happened to see some other coffee beers. So I had a 21st Amendment 1966 coffee IPA, okay. and I do like a coffee IPA. I'm thinking, Tim, you might not have loved this because it's very some, West Coast. Some West Coast there. But okay. I thought it was okay. fantastic. And I got a Trim Tab peanut butter coffee beer. It, all, all of right. these just showed up. It was like it was meant to happen. So I got into some coffee beers, Tim. How about you? What did you, you know, do? A, a good week, Brian, we got. So Georgia is starting to reopen a little bit here. And we had some of our restaurants and, and breweries that serve food open. Uh, we tried to go down to a, a, a nice brewery we enjoy. It was just packed. Everybody was out there. It's on what yes. they call the Atlanta Belt Line, New Realm Brewing. Yeah. And it was it just yeah. wasn't happening. We weren't going to make it in there. So uh, we went on. We ended up at uh, at Yard House and uh, super friendly folks there. And I'll say it was a less than stellar experience. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. But I got to try a new uh, Pilsner that uh, Phil, we were just uh, mentioning you had a Facebook live that you did last week. And you mentioned this Pilsner, and it, it's kind of interesting because I hadn't heard of it before this weekend. I think, did you say that's pronounced Bavik? Favik or Bavik, I think. I've heard it both okay. ways over in Belgium. All right. But a nice Belgian Pilsner, which was absolutely, you know, fabulous. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. So enjoyed that. Went down to a brewery that we don't get too much. They're only a couple miles from our studio here, but we just don't get there that often. But we went down to Schoolhouse Beer. Uh, they've got a really nice patio there back in kind of a wooded area. That was really nice. A little yeah. breeze blow, lizards running around and stuff. Right. So it was just a cool little time. Probably, there. you know, uh, poison ivy and oak or something yeah, around yeah. there. But, but there was a know, fence no big deal. Yeah, it was, it was scenic, you know. Well, that was it, man. I took it easy. So. I had the, the Pink Boots collab that they did there. That's right. Isn't yes. she lovely? That was that was cool. And, and you I, know what? That when we went to Yard House, I did enjoy getting a goose you did. at a chain restaurant. Yeah. I've never done that before. Yeah. Not a bad price for a fairly good size place. It was uh, Boone. 
Yeah, uh, Boone. Boone. Yeah, their Boone. Goose Selection or something like that. Yeah. It was, I think it was a nine dollar pour, but it was like yeah. thirteen ounces or something like that. You're not gonna get it like that anywhere else. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Enjoyable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Phil, anything exciting or interesting for you for this week? Beer wise? Anything. Whatever's happening that was exciting in your life. The weather. The weather, I mean, the weather is really exciting. Yeah. It's been re- the weather has been extremely dismal up here. It's we can get the lake effect coming off the lakes oh, in the winter. Okay. It brings yeah. it can bring us snow for twenty five days straight and then even in the yep. spring and summer and get cloudy overcast for like an extended period. But I don't know whether forecast right now, like the next seven or eight days, supposed to be sunny and beautiful out. So it's really exciting right now. <laughs> that's you know I remember that's I, I mentioned Phil that I lived in Auburn, New York for for a while. In New York in the spring when it starts to warm, it's such a gorgeous place. Yeah, it is. The summers can be really like magical up here. The beautiful weather and. When I was young and had no responsibilities when I lived up there, so I lived right on Lake Owasco, one of the Finger Lakes, and. Almost every day in the summer, I'd grab my skateboard, we'd skate down the lake, hang out down there with our boom boxes, listening to some punk rock and hanging out on the Did you hang out there teasing your mohawk? I did. I actually, (laughs) you know what? The first, when I first got my mohawk, I went to the the beach that weekend and didn't, burnt my skull to a crisp. I I could could barely sleep. I didn't think about it. So from then on out, I always wore a bandana if I was going to be out in the sun. Good idea. Makes sense. That was it. Well, Tim, I think we should get into the beers of the week because we got a good list of them. We do. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Brian, as always, a fantastic list of beers to get into. We've got a cornucopia of brewery Amagang beers that we're going to get into. We did a little pregame, and, and that's Phil. Did you hear about this beer that they did here in uh, Atlanta called Fauci Spring, the I Dr. Fauci no. tribute beer? So <laughs> I haven't heard about that. Yeah, we had a brewery that did that, and a few of the, Made the, the news. major news stations picked it up. So we got that and tried it. It's Acai Pell Ale. Isn't yes. that what the, how yeah. they pronounce that fruit? Uh, aroma on this is just amazing, and nice little tartness in it, really huh. tasty yeah. beer. Uh, a little satisfied from Piedmont Brewery down in Macon, Georgia. And then in Amagang, we're going to get into Saison Rose 2019. Rosé. Rosé. Rose. Yeah. Okay. You See, Brian, you forgot to put the I forgot the accent. That's on there, me. So. I, I left off the accent. Saison Rosé 2019. We believe a 2020 with hibiscus. Does that sound correct, yeah. Phil? Yeah. Okay. We've got the Hennepin, Rare Voss, Bourbon Barrel, Vanilla Smoke Porter, and we have uh, several variants of the three philosophers, the original wine barrel, bourbon barrel, blueberry coffee. And Brian has the final Game of Thrones beer. The My Watch has ended. So no shortage of delicious beers. We've only got an hour to drink all of these. Brian. Yeah. So, and we forgot started. about the Pilsner. Well, we did, you know yeah, what? And I totally Pilsner. forgot. We just yeah. started out right now. We have their new Idle Days Pilsner yeah. uh, from, from Alma Gang. Enjoying that. So plenty of great beers to drink. So, Brian, what's happening in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. All right, so the rumors have been flying around this week, and it's been officially confirmed on Facebook that Three Floyds has no, quote, immediate plans, unquote, to reopen the Three Floyds brew pub. And the brew pub staff has been indefinitely furloughed. Though, to be clear, we're only talking about the brew pub. Three Floyds will continue brewing and selling beer, and you can still pick it up curbside at the brewery or wherever else you buy it so it's an extreme about face for three floors kind of surprising and prior to the pandemic they were actually planning on expanding right. the yeah. brew yeah. pub the news did change a little bit i think the initial news said they were closing the brew pub as well as distillery yep like it sounded like they were shutting down it's and, what it sounds like, not yeah. the case that is not no. the case so So earlier this year, we heard about crowler shortages. Well, now we've got 12 ounce can shortages looming due to people stocking up on beer. You're buying too much beer and other factors. Uh, So AmericanCraftBeer.com quotes supply chain officer at Molson Coors is saying that over the past eight weeks, packaged beer orders are coming in at 4th of July levels. And this is something the beer industry has never seen before. And uh, so we're talking about as much as a a 30% increase in demand, which translates to hundreds of millions of cans. So why now? It's just kind of the perfect storm. Macros are using them. People are stocking up, buying 12 packs instead of six packs. And uh, craft breweries, the smaller ones, have increasingly gone to uh, cans over bottles. And I've noticed it's a growing package for sure. 
Absolutely. I've noticed some breweries that were going to do some for tap room only. They've shifted to doing cans so people can get them to go. Exactly. So exactly right. Do. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we'll be back very soon with Phil Linehart from Brewery Omega. Is your brewery or restaurant flooring all jacked up? Your foundation needs to be protected from heat, chemicals, and other contaminants. At the same time, you want to make sure it's slip resistant and you can clean up your messes with soap and water. You know who to call? ResTech. We've been manufacturing poured-in-place flooring since 2002, and we've got solutions to fit any facility's needs. Go on and visit our website at ResTech.net. That's R-E-S-T-E-K.net. Drop us a line and we will come to you for a free evaluation. Oh, yeah. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing. Establishing a new standard in craft beer. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram roger roger what's our back there victor now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to the beer guys radio show remember all episodes are available on demand so if you miss the broadcast hit the podcast beer guys radio is available on all popular podcasting apps now let's get back to our talk with brewery oh gang brewery oh gang phil leinhart phil thanks again for joining us we greatly appreciate it no problem it's a pleasure and we are here we have just opened another one of your beers we got into the rare voss can uh, you tell us a little bit about this beer yeah well i mean it's like i say it's um based on a old brand belgian brand called vote temp i'm not sure if it's still available uh, some people might refer to it as a brabant ale kind of like a belgian amber similar to maybe like palm that's a belgian beer kind of a mild amber beer of like six to six and a half percent abv ours really showcases the caramel note from american caramel malt and belgian caramel malt mildly hopped what really comes through beyond the, the yeast strain the the belgian yeast strain is the spices uh, coriander sure. orange yeah. peel grains of paradise but but, you know, we, our spicing, our whole philosophy is, you know, kind of like the traditional Belgian, like if you can really pick the spices out is like too much in there. If you can name yeah. it in a sense, like we want the spices to be just below the surface of the beer and it contributes to a, a well blended beer that nothing really sticks out. It just, it tastes really good, but everything's very well blended. Balance. That's, well, that's it's got balance. balance. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I love that in a beer where you have to. Now you know us beer nerds. We'll sit there and pick it apart to try and find what that yeah. flavor is. You know. You so. know. There's value in doing that, but like every sure. time when I when we brew a new beer, my acid test is I bring the beer home and I have it at home when I want to have a beer, and I'm not analyzing it. I just open it, pour it in my glass, and drink it, and that's when I'm at my best because. Yeah. You're not trying to pick it apart. You just get the overall impression of the beer. That's I'll get people who like, I'll try a new beer and someone's like, Oh, what, what notes did you get? What? I'm like, I don't know. I was yeah. just enjoying the I beer. Mean, I was just drinking the beer. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I read some of our reviews online. I'm like, whoever's writing this, like, there's no way they taste all this. It's just yeah. like, they, they create this in their head sometimes. I think I agree with both of what you're saying is a certain amount of fatigue to over analyzing it. You know, you can yeah. pick yeah. it apart, but that's work. I mean, sure. I, and you know I, I, I want to drink a beer. <laughs> sometimes it's fun right. to sit there and look at that. Yeah. Sometimes you want to kick back and have a beer. You know, it's true. Sure. There, there is a time, you know, we have taste panel at the brewery. There's a time for doing that, you know, but there's also time just to like, okay, how does this beer taste? And just right. Take a nice, good, you know, gulp and see how it tastes. Just like it was. Meant I agree. To be. Absolutely. Just like, you know, because when most people drink, and you know in bars or whatever they're not picking apart the beer you know they're 
They're right. socializing. Drinking. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're drinking and socializing. Absolutely. absolutely. It shouldn't get in the way of that. It, it should not. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, Phil, something we don't like to dwell on, but we do like to talk with it here with our guest recently is, as all the TV commercials say, in these uncertain times, yes. <laughs> there's just so much going on. And uh, how is Amagang operating uh, through the COVID-19 crisis? Well, we're have reduced volume. You know, uh, draft is not quite half of our total volume, but it's a significant portion. So that's basically zero now with all of yeah. the on, on-premise bars being closed. But we have seen the off-premise tick up a little bit, like our bottle, certain can sales and so forth. So we've had to put a number of people on furlough. We're running like a reduced brewing schedule, packaging schedule, and reduced uh, manpower right now. And just working closely, watching states, uh, their plans as far as, you know, uh, opening back up and so forth and trying to anticipate all that. So it's it's interesting times for sure. Now, you mentioned that uh, you've got plans, tentative plans for when you're going to open back up. Is that right? Yeah, our tap. we have an on-site tap house restaurant. So hopefully uh, if fall goes well, I think that's part of phase three. And if all the metrics in the first two phases are good in terms of like new cases and all that kind of declining click cases and so forth, hopefully mid-June we'll be able to open back up on, on some fashion we, we have been doing thursdays fridays saturdays and i think i think sunday too we, we've been having curbside pickup of beer where a person can go online and create their order and then come to the brewery and pick it up so that's helped a little bit doing everything you can get the sure. beer in the customer's hands you know i saw that uh you guys do a lot of pretty large events at the brewery as well i saw a lot of really nice concerts that were their schedule yeah. had been through there before some of uh, I'm very into modern alt rock. So I saw of monsters and yeah. men were coming and death cap for Q. Right. Yeah. We had a number of yeah. shows. I think we had five or six. I think at this point, I don't think, I don't know. I heard some maybe postponed to September. Some of them were just yeah. postponed till next year. So it's a huge, I mean, the total economic effect up here is pretty big. I mean, the induction has been canceled, the hall of fame induction and all that. Right. Oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So that, you know, things like that, they're, big economic draws for this area i heard references to you playing guitar have you ever played for the folks while they're drinking your beer or is that yeah yeah okay. if, uh, i'm in a yeah. band and we have uh in the summer we have uh, what's called fire pit fridays where we have bands play and then we have a big fire pit outside we have a fire and so forth so yeah i've i've played throughout my life different levels band so That's forth nothing. you know i saw something i think i saw mitch still mention this one time that yeah he, i know mitch yeah okay when he was yeah. in when he was at i think it was stone or it could have been ab when he was out there that they had like yeah. the local breweries had a brewers band a super group they of would brewers get to, a super group of brewers <laughs> that would get together <laughs> you know mitch's office here at his brewery he's got a guitar and he amp does. and stuff in there yeah he's ready to rock so It'd be a yep. good time. Well, yeah, we talk. We talk whenever I see Mitch. We talk music at least when we're not talking about sure. beer. <laughs> we'll have to come up and and get the Phil Linehart experience at the brewery. That's the right. Yeah. Beer and listen to the <laughs> listen to you play there. So <laughs> okay, sounds good. You know, I saw something interesting on the website that I didn't know. As as long as I've been drinking uh, Amagang beers, I didn't know the story behind the name, which is kind of cool. Can you can you share that with us? Yeah, well, it's like a folks, you know, gang, gang as some of the German like gang is like a parade, and it was the I, you know I'm no historian, but back in 1515, I think when King Charles was ostracized from Brussels, and then as far as my understanding of the story, when he came back into the city within the city walls uh they had a celebration and that was the first homagong uh and it's something they do uh yearly i think it's mainly around the grand place in brussels um but it's basically a parade but they have all you know magicians and uh looks like quite, it's almost, almost looks like mardi gras the costumes and stuff like that um so that's where the name comes from is that where uh, the the tie into the like the design the patterns and the colors on the bottles because i was i was curious about that but now that i hear it and i didn't even find this so tim found this uh i had no idea where it came from either i thought it was a different story but yeah that argyle uh harlequin kind of 
uh, motif. I, yeah, it's just some of the flags, I, I, I believe. You know, the old Belgian flags and so forth. It's cool stuff. Festive, it worked. So we, yeah. on on our front arch of the brewery, uh, well, I don't know if you've seen pictures of the brewery, but we have a front arch and uh, there's two dates. This has the name Omegang and, and then two dates, 1549. So maybe I had my date wrong. I said 1515. 1544. 1549 and 1997 and so that was the i believe the first almagang was 1549 and then 1997 was when the brewery was built here but i've heard the the tour guides have told me people will ask some people have asked was the brewery built in 1549? Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> you should uh, say yes. Uh, no, I don't think they were pouring concrete back then. What? Yeah, that's a, they make it. We were the first place here to have this. It was all gravel, no it concrete, was. but yeah. it was the same basic thing. Well, Phil, we, we want to dive into a little more stuff, but we're about out of time here. So before we go to break, we just opened Saison Rosé. Can you give us a quick rundown on this beer? Yeah, that was our first co-ferment. So... Um, like it's a co-fermentation of brewer's wort and grape juice and it's really produces really interesting beer uh, like you'll you'll find out when you taste it uh that one was particularly about 30 percent, 35 percent was grape juice and then we made you know kind of like a classic saison wort uh and then fermented it with our yeast strain and then added uh, hibiscus for the for the color it's quite tasty it's tasty beer. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take another break, but we'll be back very soon to talk more with Brewery Amagang. As a brewery owner or taproom manager, are you looking for ways to enhance your customer experience while maximizing your revenues? Craft Cellar is a mobile solution that helps your brewery drive sales and attract new customers through online pre-sales for beer releases, events, and memberships. Get details now at craftseller.com. Mention Beer Guys Radio after sign up and extend your free trial to a full 30 days. Remember craftseller.com. C R A F T C E L L R.com. As beer lovers, we know real beer. And Athletic Brewing makes non-alcoholic beer that stands shoulder to shoulder with full-strength craft beer. With a fraction of the calories and certified organic, it's a great beer to enjoy anytime. Check out Athletic's selection of IPAs, Golden Ales, Stouts, and more at athleticbrewing.com. Use code BEERGUYS25 for 25% off your first order and U.S. customers get free nationwide shipping. Athletic Brewing, brew without compromise. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram what is now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to beer guys radio show i want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates wmxi 98.1 fm in hattiesburg mississippi catch beer guys radio on wmxi every saturday at 9 p.m local time now let's get back to our conversation with brewery omegang Phil, we wanted to talk to you some about your your background. You uh, mm-hmm. you actually you've been with Amagang since uh, two thousand seven, correct? Correct. Yeah. But how long have you been in the brewing industry? Uh, my first job was straight out of college in nineteen eighty four. I worked eighty four. Okay. Yeah, I worked right. for uh, Manhattan Brewing Company in New York City. I grew up in New Jersey, not far from Manhattan. Uh, and Manhattan was one of the first brew pubs in the country and got a job there making that the head brewer was a guy named Mark Whitty uh, from England. He worked at uh, Samuel Smith's and then Whitbreads and we made mostly like uh, real ale. And when I left okay. Garrett, yeah. all of our work there actually. Oh, you know, really? Before, before okay. I went down to Brooklyn. How about that? Interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, since then I've worked in a number of breweries in different areas. Uh, I worked at Harpoon up in Boston, the Lion Brewery in uh, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and and I studied brewing over in Germany and did a little like an apprenticeship at uh, Paulaner in Munich there. Okay, wow, did those you, are big names. Did you go to school? Was, was this your career goal? Did it just happen, or were you, did you know you? No, I knew. It, yeah, I I got a degree in chemistry, and I knew about okay. halfway through college I wanted to go into brewing. So, I have, I have a brother in the brewing industry also. 
and so he was a big influence on me. And um, so I just stayed. I kept, got, chemistry is a very good base science for brewing. And so I just got my degree and then went to a two week master brewers course out at the University of Wisconsin. And um, 95, I went to work for Anheuser Busch in Newark, New Jersey, uh, and spent some time in St. Louis, but mainly in Newark. And then 2007 came to Oma Gang. It's fun to talk to the people that have been in the in the industry for many years, and like you know, you know Mitch. Still, we talked to Daniel Carey there at New Glarus, and yeah. you know him and Mitch. He said their desks were across from each other, so it's. Yeah. I, I'm always fascinated by the the pedigree, the family tree, so to speak, the family tree of uh, American uh, of beer. craft yeah. brewing, you know, and seeing like here, uh, down here, Phil Sweetwater. It yeah. seems like it seems everyone goes through Sweetwater at one mm -hmm. time or another before they start their brewery. So. It's a rite of passage. I saw I actually was looking around through your bio and I saw that there was a chemistry degree in there. And I yeah. was thinking this this guy knew he wanted to get he into was brewing. On that's path, a guy right? that was yeah. focused. He knew out of the gate. So I'm curious how much of things change. It, like it's 12 plus 13, I guess, 13 years since you started at, at uh, Oma Gang. How much has have things changed at Oma Gang in, the, in that time? Well, I mean, we've we've gotten bigger. We've got, uh, uh, you know, we've had a lot of more equipment, tanks, fermenters, uh, bright beer tanks, centrifuge, yeast propagators. Uh, a lot of them we totally redid the packaging brand, you know, brand new uh, monoblock rinser filler, new kegger. Uh, fortunately, being owned by Duval, we we can get some of their secondhand hand-me-down equipment that's still in very good shape. Uh, we just but we just have to bring it over here and convert it to uh, U.S. electronics and all that. And it's changed a lot in that you know we've had to branch out. I mean. The very first beer at Oma Gang was the Abbey Ale, kind of like a double style. And then they, all the styles that initially came after that were very, quote, Belgian, you know, unquote. But we found we've had a, you know, branch out from that because people's, you know, you're talking about IPAs. They're still like the vast majority of market share and so forth. And so... Uh, we've really branched out in, ter in that way also in terms of our styles that we're brewing. I mean, this Pilsner is like a Belgian. A lot of people don't realize that is a thing, Belgian pills. They think right. Belgians just make like Abbey beers and stuff like that. But it, it really is a thing over there. And it's a style unto itself. Uh, but with our, our like Nirvana IPA and Neon Rainbows is like a, kind of like a hazy New England style IPA. You know, we found we just we have to uh, innovate to, to compete, you know, so it's changed a lot in that way. We're still very, you know, we're still owned by Duval and Belgium and we're very Belgian in our DNA and our approach in a way and, and certain things. But, you know, I've brewed all kinds of styles in, in my career. So, you know, we certainly have the knowledge and, and the capability to do all kinds of styles. That's when I was reading up on uh, on Amagang. I think I saw it looked like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Phil, but I think for around the first five years of the brewery's existence, they really only had three or four different beers. Yeah, yeah, it was, and and th well, that's a heat that brings a huge change. Like sure. the first beer was the Abbey, just in the 75 centiliter bottle, it wasn't available in kegs, it wasn't available in 12 ounce bottles, and that's. You know, largely Oma Gang was built on that packaging package format, the 75 centiliter cork and wire hood finished uh, bottle. And that that that's almost non-existent now. You know, it's people don't want these big bottles; they want like a single serve, and so forth. So that it's changed a lot. That really has changed a lot. Well, that's something I think back to, like the late 90s, what I call the late 90s brew pub. To me, that has a certain you're going to see an amber ale, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you'll probably see a half, you'll see this and that. And at that time, that's what people wanted in their beer. They wanted to go to a brewery that they knew they made this style well, you know, yeah. so it wasn't, you know, you weren't getting the Hayes bros lining up every weekend to get the latest four pack. Right. So it was a little true. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're into the, uh, the Hennepin at this point. Is that right, Tim? We're in Hennepin. 
which is your farmhouse sale. I'm curious. I'm never sure which is your biggest seller, the three philosophers or the Hennepin. Well, right now, the Neon Rainbows, I think, uh, overall. Uh, is it that? really? Wow. Yeah. Or it's quickly approaching it. I, I, I look at the spreadsheets from the sales guys. But Hennepin, yeah, it's lately hasn't been doing the best for us. People don't, I don't know, they want to drink hazy IPAs, you know, or, or seltzers or, you know, there's a lot of, it's just. They don't know about that farmhouse sale. The American market's crazy. The American drinker is just, there's so, I mean, yeah. they went through this period where it's like, you know, they call them the promiscuous consumer because they don't, there's no brand loyalty. They just want to try something that's new, you know. And right now with the Absolutely. seltzers, that yeah. that's totally blown it apart, you know. Have you done a seltzer yet? Yeah. No. <laughs> Are we going to see an Amagang seltzer? No, not a seltzer. I don't think we might not do happen. something hey, along those we, lines. But with you know, Belgian uh, yeast, maybe in spices. Belgian seltzer. I yeah, don't know. Lighter. This could be yeah, interesting. No, no, the whole key, the whole <laughs> you need to make your FSB as neutral as possible. You know, so the flavor, oh, right. the flavorings come through. We saw today in the news that. Uh, I think it's Charlotte, North Carolina. There's actually a seltzery open in there. That that's seltzery. there's going to be the <laughs> seltzery. <laughs> seltzery. Yeah. So there was a a spirited discussion online about uh, the viability. And I think yeah. back to the wine cooler craze, the Zima craze, the uh, Bacardi breeze. A Zima They should do a, a Zima <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I remember Zima. Yeah. Well, I mean, they always I, talk about I the pen. It. The pendulum is swinging. I, I hope it's reached the far end. I hope the pendulum's going to go back. You yeah. and me, but in all honesty, really. you know, I mean, I've had seltzers. They're fine for what they are, but it's not beer to me. You know, I mean, that's kind of my thing too. We've got a we've got a brewery here, Variant, which is a phenomenal craft brewery, and they did a seltzer, and the brewer there is like, "I want you to try this. Take this crowler and try this." It was really good, Phil. It was really yeah. good. But it's but it's it's a fruity seltzer, you know. If you're a beer lover, you're a beer lover. You know, I'm a beer lover. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> I agree right. with you. I, mean, I you am a beer stand lover. Stand up for yeah. what's right. That's we talked about. You know, these craft breweries jumping on the uh, on the bandwagon there with it. With no, the at the I same token, a... you've got to compete too. You got to. You do. You sure. got to got to innovate and play in the. It's a survival thing, it just like the hand sanitizer. There, yeah. Just, like yeah. sanit they, they were doing uh, seltzers, and now, like, yeah. wait, hold on, everybody wants hand sanitizer. Let's That's do that. It. Well, all this seltzer talk has made me sad, so we're gonna have to take <laughs> a break and, comp and compose ourselves here. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we will be right back with more from Phil Leinhart at Brewery Amagang. It's Brian and Tim, the Beer Guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're Storytime Construction, and we build breweries. We're Georgia's most experienced and hands-on contractors when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding existing breweries. We offer full build-outs, remodeling, and additions, as well as consulting and construction management. Give us a call at 770-733-4343. Storytime Construction. We build breweries. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram the numbers all go to 11 does that mean it's louder well it's one louder isn't it? now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to the beer guys radio show if you enjoy the show please consider supporting us on patreon just go to patreon.com slash beer guys patrons get cool perks like beer guys swag and commercial free episodes now let's get back to brewery oh my gang brewery oh my gang uh, phil we're going into the last segment of the show and it's yep. just about time for my watch has ended. <laughs> so I think this is a good segue here. Uh, we wanted to talk to you about these Game of Thrones beers because this was a big thing. You know, I think yeah. uh, 
those of us that were fans of the show, we all had to go, you know, look for them. And, and yes. you had to make sure to get them, especially when you were watching the show. So yeah. how did this come about? How in the world did Amagang connect up to uh, to make these beers happen? Well, HBO approached us, okay. uh, that office down in Times Square. And there's some Belgian beer bars down there, BXL being one. Where I guess, you know, as what I heard the producers of the show would go there and they loved the Belgian beers, liked our beers and thought some of our motifs, our symbolism of our brand, like the old Belgian brand with the griffin and all like kind of medieval matched well with the show and, you know, what it's about and some of the symbols and the show and so forth. So that's how it came about. Did you have a lot of creative freedom with those or did they kind of give you ideas like we want a beer well, for this season with these it characters. Was, it was interesting. They, especially in the beginning, they would kind of like say, you know, we'd like this beer to tie in with this character or this setting. But I made it pretty clear. It's like, you make the show, we make the beer. There <laughs> um, you go. That's it. it. Yeah. It, it worked out very well. And it was an, it's an interesting way to, to formulate a beer because you're not just thinking about flavors and, and so forth, alcohol and all that or you know, whether it's going to be traditional beer or whatever, but you're thinking, what can I bring out in the beer that's in this character or in this setting or, and so forth? And so it was a unique way to uh, to formulate beer. And we, you know, we came out with some great beers. You should have started giving them ideas for the show and rewriting this, and they would have got the idea real quick to to leave the beer. And you know what? That last that last season needed some help, so I think a they brewer could have helped. They could have left an Amagang bottle on the table instead right? of a Starbucks. Oh, that would be <laughs> so, even uh, better. Go with that. I want to see it. I want to see a double brown ale with maple syrup that's sixteen percent saying. It's my podcast has ended. It's my podcast. I don't want to see that. You don't want to see it. That. Okay. No, well, I was thinking about those, like so. at the end of each show. You know, every show. You <laughs> yeah. want to drink it every show. For the, there you go. For the end no, of the show. You know what? Though this was really fun, Phil. I will say I really enjoyed looking for these beers and, yeah. and opening them while watching the show. And you know the the series of beers was definitely much more satisfying than the end of of the series game of thrones yeah. so we enjoyed that, <laughs> yes, but that's good here that's fun stuff i'd love to see more tie-ins like that seeing little little beers that kind of go along with you know shows or movies or whatever yeah i'm, I'm game so i do more of that and you might see more of that so now that i know that you've released some gift boxes and whatnot but the show is is over so right. what will happen with these beers are they done or will they kind of come back occasionally well we're, we're coming out with the gift pack this year we're rebrewing three of them Valer morgulis Valer do harris and three-eyed raven Right. Yeah. And put in a gift pack with a glass, I believe. Yeah. I mean, they, they may live on in some some way. I may repurpose them <laughs> or tweak them slightly <laughs> to be repurposed. Change the name. My watch has ended with a question mark and then just leave it and see see what you get there. Yeah. I want to call it my watch has ended and now I'm drinking beer. And now I'm drinking <laughs> beer. That's right. a just <laughs> drinking. Absolutely. Well, Phil, I wanted to talk to you some about Blendery Amagang. Yeah. Uh, which I just saw reason. That's something kind of new for Amagang, correct? New in 2018? Yeah. We wanted to do something a little smaller volume exclusive to bring, to try and draw people to the brewery here in Cooperstown. And it was around the same time that Duval also, you know, acquired Boulevard Brewing in Kansas City okay. and mm -hmm. Firestone Walker in California. Uh, so some of the initial beers we came out with is kind of collaborations with those breweries, like the one beer, uh, we got some of uh, the Love Child from a sour beer from Boulevard that we blended with one or two of our beers. I, I forget the exact blend. Uh, then we did, when Duval purchased uh, Parson Walker, we did a collaboration with it was a collaboration with Firestone Walker, but also Barrel Works, their barrel uh, program south of right. uh, mm -hmm. Paso Robles there in Buellton, I think. And they have a great guy there, Jim Crooks. And uh, we brewed a, a, a beer at the brewery in Firestone Walker. One of our uh, beers, Glimmer Glass. It's like a Saison with a uh, unique yeast strain. Fermented it down at Barrel Works, and then Jim blended it with various uh, with sour beer in various barrels. And then it's just uh, like we took, we had some excess for coming out. The, the three fills with coffee and blueberry, we had some excess from the production run that we put in bourbon barrels and it tastes really good. And we only have like, we only filled 10 barrels, small volume, 18 hectares. Small bat. And we'll, we'll bottle that up and just, and just sell it, you know, just exclusive at the brewery. So that sounds fantastic. Are, are you, are there going to be a lot more of things like that? Yeah. Still? I mean, we've done a number of them and we, you know, we'll continue to do them. 
it's just a way to to try out different ideas sometimes or like a lot of, like it's too big for a blendery batch but we had a little bit uh we we had some excess my watch has ended so we put it in bourbon barrels and we're going to release that and a different name and so forth but that's a little bit higher volume yeah, absolutely oh so, yes See, I thought it was interesting, like you were talking about taking some of the love child and brewing it, blending it with some of your beers. This just isn't like, it's not like you're just blending, you know, a Belgian stout or something. You're crossing styles and. Yeah, because that's, I mean, it brings out a lot, a lot of brewing period is about blending, but especially, right. you know, Belgian styles, like, especially like when you get into the sours and the, uh, the, the lombics and so forth, it's all about blending. You know, you got to blend stuff to create a consistent, you know final product will we be seeing it someday from you guys a lambic or a goose style beer like an open well, you know i gotta be honest with you guys it's, they're not my favorite uh okay. styles uh, but uh for us to do it here uh that's not to say someday we may do something like that but for us to do it here i'd have to build a brand on the whole nother building we couldn't do it in our main production building so that costs it's a lot of capital money right now that is not a little bit of money there true you do have the real estate for it though you could have we do we do yeah yeah we do we do have the real estate again cool ship there so you know what they've got someone in the family tree they've got uh, boulevard and yeah and then you know we've done i've i've spent a fair amount of time over at leafman's uh and that's where okay does all their all their sour wild beer is done on leafman's they don't bring a cell of a bacteria or wild yeast into Duval Brewery. Everything's done at Leafman's. And so we've done uh, a couple of collaborations with them. So Phil, I saw really quick, we're running short on time. I saw that your, your brewery is actually based or built on a 136 acre former hop farm. Right. I'm curious, do you still grow any hops there and do you use them in any of your beers? Well, we, uh, we, we do, uh, this will be our third year or fourth year of a beer called, uh, Hop State, New York, using all New York grown hops. The, the, what we did, I don't know if you're familiar, but this is where hops were grown back in the 1800s and early 1900s was the biggest hop growing area in the country here. In fact, the relatives of the bush still have an estate here and they have old pictures of the hop fields where they grew the hops that went into Budweiser back in the late 1800s. Wow, um, really? And okay. so we did a project with Cornell University because when I saw hop growing was starting to come back to upstate New York, I'm, I was like, I think the best thing we can do is try to help growers who have never grown hops before is like what varieties might be more disease resistant, what varieties might do the best in this soil type uh, and this weather type. So we did a partnership with Cornell University and funded some of their work where they, they were even, go- they had a scout in one year that was going out and to these local hop fields and farmers and and helping them with you know how how are you irrigating and how are you applying fertilizer and stuff like that so my, that was my focus like how can we like help new york state hop farmers to grow and process better quality hops because it's it's a lot to it you know a lot of people think th- thought they could just go right into it be no problem it costs a lot of money a lot of know-how and a lot of work and so rather than us growing our own hops that's a whole nother endeavor you know i was like let's try and fund you know cornell to to, to research this and and we work with the guy there steve miller who was their hop specialist and to help these local farms and uh there's a significant i don't know how many acres now i think there was over 350 acres in new york state at one point and like I say, we've done this uh, all New York hop beer called Hop State New York. And this year, it'll be predominantly, if not all, New York State grown and malted grains. So all ingredients, possibly not quite majority of the ingredients, by far the majority of the ingredients will be New York State. Well, very cool stuff. Uh, Phil, we are out of time. Um, if yep. people want to keep up with what's happening with Brewery Amagang, where should they go? Uh, go to our website, www.omagang.com. Easy enough. Absolutely. Yep. Phil, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay, guys. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Make sure to join us next week as we talk with one of our Tallahassee favorites, Ology Brewing. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. <laughs>